My father was born in 1929. In the 30s, he was a little boy. And he remembers vividly, hey, son, go shoot that squirrel, bring it inside. Hey, go snag a chicken, wring its neck, bring it inside, we, we want supper. And that's just a way of life. And I think we've forgotten that in such a short amount of time. So what's up guys, by the end of this video, you are gonna know how we catch, process, and prepare chickens so you can actually enjoy the meat. As with many, many homesteads, a really important thing out there is that your chickens that you've cared for all the way and your the rest of your animals from hatching to raising them to getting them on clean grass to having a wonderful experience outside getting to eat all the bugs and grubs they want being in that sunshine having massive amounts of their diet be tied up with just the best things hopefully it is each of our hopes that our animals have a wonderful life and one bad day Ladies and gentlemen, today is that day. And I'm gonna show you with as little work as you can with stuff that you probably have just laying around your house right now, how you can take and process your own chicken meat without breaking the bank. Most of the stuff you probably already have in your kitchen or garage. But if you don't, uh, we're gonna have links to them below in the description. They don't cost you anything extra. Uh, we'll end up getting like 1% or something like that. The tools and equipment you need, chicken cone. And rather than a chicken cone today, we're gonna be using a traffic cone, also known as a killing cone. But they're like 50 or 60 bucks and they're galvanized and all kinds of stuff like that. You can also make them out of five gallon buckets, but they're more work. You can snag this guy here on Amazon. I think it was like 16 bucks or 18 bucks. This is the 18 inch one. And we're gonna show you how to modify that here in a second. Outside of that, we're gonna need a few buckets, right? This is my mushroom growing bucket here. So it's got some holes in it. I don't know if we'll need that one. And then I just have uh, another standard bucket right here. No big deal. And then here's the cool one. These are poultry bags, right? These poultry bags, when we're done with the meat, what you're gonna see is that we take that meat, we throw it inside, we'll take the bird, we'll dip it inside the hot water with it in there and we're good. And most notably, you need a turkey fryer. So right here we got a turkey fryer. This is just any old turkey fryer. I think this is actually a banjo classic. Uh, and then we had the original turkey pot somewhere, I couldn't find it, so that's just a kitchen pot. That's pretty much it. Other things that you'll need, we've got a cutting board, we have a paring knife, we have some scissors, and when we're all done with everything, you'll wanna get those chickens on ice as, possible, as fast as you can. And so we've got uh, just a cooler here. This is my sous vide cooler with ice in it. Really, we're not doing very much, right? We're not even gonna have a, we didn't even buy or rent a chicken plucker. We're just gonna do that by hand. If you uh, wanna store a whole bunch for winter because of feed concerns, uh, you might wanna look at renting one. Uh, usually they're a few bucks here and there. Also, check out all of this stuff on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Um, you can get old turkey fryers for like $10 or $20, seriously. Coolers, you probably have them for free. Traffic cones, don't worry about buying it from Amazon for me. Go find one, they're, they're laying in a ditch somewhere in the street and you just wash it up real good. So yeah, we're gonna, without that, we're gonna get to it. All right guys, to modify this chicken cone, what we're gonna be doing here is I'm gonna be cutting this end open so it's a little bit larger and you're not gonna really wanna use any of your food grade stuff. You wanna be very careful so you don't cut yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and cut onto this here and a lot of this rubberized stuff is very, very tough. Right, it's designed to be run over and all kinds of stuff. And so we're just cutting this, and I'm just cutting, there's a little lip right here. I'm just cutting this little lip off. And the reason I'm doing that is so the chicken head can slide in there easier. Um, so we're just gonna make it to a point where any average chicken head can go through that cone pretty easily. Usually uh, two inches or maybe three inches is all you would need. And we're gonna get started, and I'm gonna transition to some scissors. Again, these are non-food grade scissors. And uh, we're gonna get to it. All right, that should be good. I'll clean up the edges there with a knife a little bit. And the next thing I'm gonna do, normally you're gonna take this outside, you're gonna screw it to a tree or something like that. And so this is actually good enough as it is, but I'm probably gonna cut it again back here. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a lift. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now, where I'm just gonna cut the back end of this off. When I get this, this is easily hosable. You can hose this out. The other thing too, guys, is I've thrown on old jeans, some muck boots. Why muck boots? I don't anticipate getting that dirty, but I do anticipate using a hose 
here and there. So uh, I figured I'd throw some muck boots on. And again, look at this. This is that plastic, nice high density rubber. It'll be easy to clean out. There's not really any surfaces. Uh, for this stuff to get scratched on. I'm sure someone in the comments below will let me know how horrible I am and going to hell for using, you know, not the right thing, I can't believe it. They, one study showed this. Okay. And here is your inexpensive killing cone that you can save for a lot later. Um, I'm just gonna kinda cut a little dip here real quick. All right, you want to, you basically take this right here, killing cone, screw, this into a board, hanging on the nail. You're gonna see the chicken goes in here in a second. Cut the throat, not a big deal. All right, you see all of uh, all the guinea fowl are coming over, the turkeys are coming over. You're just coming to hang out, hey turkey, hey. It's not your day today, turkey. It's those guys' day. So we're gonna go ahead and get over there, capture them. This is actually an antique. Don't know if you guys can see that, there's a teeny little hook on the end. It's just a steel bar with a handle. This is a chicken grabber. It actually won't even work for the turkey because it's too small. You just go in there, you snip the chicken here. So I'll, I don't know that you're gonna get footage of that, uh, but I'll do my best and uh, we'll snack some chickens, throw them in the box and uh, we'll get processing. All right, so here we are in the house. We just screwed it into the house. Just screwed it in directly, have a five gallon bucket there. We're not gonna keep the blood or anything. Um, some holiday events. Uh, we'll make, have to make blood rice, but we're just gonna invert the chicken, set it inside, it comes out, cut it, blood goes in. When it stops kicking around, we're then gonna move in here to the dip. Once it's dipped, we'll then gut, leaving the feet on, or pluck and then gut. The pluckings will probably come into here. I'm trying to assemble a nice U-shaped cell for us. Actually, the gut bucket will probably go here, and then the leftover will go there. When it's done, we're going here. We're trying to tighten up that U-shaped cell. All right, guys, and here we are. We the first one here. We have family over. All right, we're just gonna cut the head off. Killing cone's too small. We have the two buckets here. All right, so what's going on in here is they're just, uh, there's no pressure. Uh, they didn't struggle very much. So once their carotid artery was slit, um, they began to pass out immediately. And everything, and everything else is just reflexes. We're just doing two at once. We're gonna come in here, get the other six in here. Really, we should have moved this outside. Just preheating the water a bit. And then these are just a standard neoprene glove. You can find them everywhere. The temperature is between 145 and 160 degrees.
Here's washing and pin feathers. There's removable pin feathers, but we'll go ahead and start removing that here. And after a quick rinse, we're picking all the pin feathers off. Once the pin feathers are off, we're gonna go over there. Yeah, pin feathers. So we went got them. We have the chicken heads here. The lamb's cleaning the gizzards out. Got some hearts, liver. Uh, we're saving the feet. And then the rest we're doing, go ahead and dipping. We're cooling the bodies down. So we got one or two left. I'll show you that process here in a second. What is up, y'all? I'm exhausted, it's the very end of the day. I apologize, I cut large sections of the quad, well, not that I cut the video out, I just turned the camera off. We had folks from China over, and they were family friends, and they were, they started going into stories about how they did things as kids, and I wanna be respectful. So I shut the camera off. Um, a lot of these, they the way that they process everything, again, in China, still today, uh, but even more so, maybe back in the 70s or 60s, uh, you didn't waste anything. And so I was actually pretty shocked today, so, uh, originally, I kept the chicken heads. I was gonna make them into treats for the dogs. And uh, my uncle asked for them and he's gonna turn them into chicken stock and then he's gonna compost them. So we, we processed three chickens today, not a big deal. Here's what's left of my haul. My mom took one and I gave my uncle two. The family friends, they did not take any. Uh, they had chickens and they were just happy to help. Uh, there's some church friends there. So I'm gonna go ahead and weigh these uh, chickens. I definitely see the difference between when people talking about uh, roosters, pin feathers are very difficult to, to kind of remove. All right, so. Let's see here's what we have left. We got a three pound, 13 ounce, three pound, three ounces, and two pound, 11 ounces that are left. So we, we lost a lot of weight with them. Ah, it's kind of interesting. And so tonight what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and process these guys. And as you can see here, you know, uh, this worked out very well, the hot bath dip. I'm either gonna freeze this, uh, maybe drain them, but I think I'm gonna turn one of these or two of these into some chickens some chicken soup, like pre-done meals right now. One of them we're gonna throw in the freezer. An interesting thing is the barred rocks were so much larger than everything else. So even stripped, you know, all the chickens look the same, but I knew which ones the barred, barred rocks were because they were so large. I mean, they were, they were eight to 10 pounds when they were new. I'm pretty sure I gave those away uh, to my mom and my uncle. Those were like five, or they were eight to 10 pounds when they were alive. and I, Bet you they were probably six pounds each. Nicole and I were just two people, so we selected the smallest ones and we gave the rest away. I'm probably gonna keep most of my chickens on the foot and process them as we go. So there's a term in lean manufacturing called overproduction, and it's basically like, look at all the stuff we have to do just to keep and maintain things. So the alternate to that is only process when you can do it, right? My chickens are alive, and yeah, I have effort to keep the chickens alive. However, they're not gonna spoil being alive outside. But these chickens here, if I don't properly process them, or maybe what happens is the power goes out, they can spoil. So I'm going through hurdles and hoops to make sure that doesn't happen. I'm gonna probably elect to keep more things on the hoof or on the foot and less things on there. So anyways, I, we learned, I learned a ton. This was my first time really raising, processing. The chickens, it's actually, you know what? It's kind of crazy. So these chickens started their life right here, right? They were born right here in May, went through their entire life cycle, and here they are in bag form here, and they're gonna go to feed our family. Not only that, we have our compost bin right here. And so all of the things that we've been feeding, looking like at see chicken eggs in there right now, where we've had cycles, multiple cycles, from this kitchen outside, back into the kitchen, back outside, back into the kitchen, that, and the compost was fed to the chickens, and then now the chicken droppings are going on the garden so we can grow more and you're just completing the life cycle. This is how, this is the first time that I've gone through the chicken killing process. Of course, I've hunted before. So once the animal was dead, it was very familiar for me to, you know, strip the, you know, all the fur off or all the feathers off. You know, of course I had to go and remove the crop. That wasn't a big deal. The traditional way that uh, the family friends came in, they actually cut through the breast all the way, uh, just from a practical standpoint and just removed everything. And it's just a very, it's interesting, it's a different way um, that they, they did that. So they, they removed all the things instead 
of, you know, cutting them around the back end. It was a faster way and it was just very interesting. And of course, we kept and maintained the feet and the feet are going to be eaten by my whole family. And then the heads are going to become chicken stock and then fertilizer uh, from my uncle's garden. And I, I'm going to get these guys, you know, cut up here and probably turned into a meal or two. That was my first time all the way through. We had an issue with the killing cone. Uh, I didn't cut it small enough. So you really do want, you know, maybe a four inch hole um, to make sure that the chicken's head pops through. So that was a learning experience. Of course, I'm gonna have placements way better next time around. I'll probably also turn around and do it all outside next time. Of course, it was winter time, so we kind of did it inside. Um, but, you know, let's say it was, again, my father who was born in 1929. In the 30s, he was a little boy. And he remembers vividly, hey, son, go shoot that squirrel, bring it inside. Hey, go snag a chicken, ring its neck, bring it inside, we, we want supper. And that's just a way of life. And I think we've forgotten that in such a short amount of time. So again, these chickens were loved. Uh, they had a wonderful life. And at the beginning of the video, I said, you know, they had a wonderful life and one bad day. I'm gonna say they had a wonderful life, including today. And they had like a bad 30 seconds. You know, they were caught and then they were really docile. When I put them in the box, of course it was dark. And then when I opened the box to take them, they were really calm, put them into the chicken, cone, it was really calm. And then it was only like, you know, when I actually slit the throat that, uh, you know, they start kicking and stuff like that. So they had a really well-rounded life for a chicken, as opposed to, you know, the chicken in the fridge from the department store, you know, they probably didn't have such a great life. Actually, they, most of them, if they came from a poultry house, had a horrible life. Just constantly breathing in feces, you know, grain feed, they're, they're living on top of themselves. And then the, the, the automated process was so bad. You know, I really didn't, of course, I've hunted before, so there's nothing against it, but I never gone through the, hey, let's, let's kill it process uh, with the killing con that was new to me today. And it really wasn't bad. And not that I expected to feel weird about it, but it felt right, right? It felt coming full circle. And again, here we are, chickens that were starting there. You can see them in some of my older videos. And here they are full circle. Of course, we kept all of our hens. When the hens are stopped laying eggs, maybe four or five years from now, they'll probably find their way. Anyways, let me know in the comments down below. Of course, I had a terrible, not nah, terrible, but I didn't know what I was doing the first time. Tons of mistakes. You guys are brilliant. I'd love to hear things. And another thing too is with the gloves, the rubber gloves, we definitely did not need a uh, chicken plucker. Like, yeah, it probably would have been convenient, uh, but I mean, it, it really was uh, just a few minutes of chicken pluck. I mean, it really wasn't bad once you scalded it and everything. So hopefully we can get them on the channel. Guys, like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.